But uh, before I tell you what uh, we're going to discuss today, I want you to take a look at that chart. Take a good look at that chart. And I do have a question for you. I'll just tell you a quick story about this uh, company. It moved up today more than 7%. Um, and I would like you to answer a question. Hold on a second. I'm looking for it. Uh, would you consider trading it? What would you say? I mean, you look at the chart. Would you say yes? Would you say no? Would you consider trading it? The only thing I'm telling you, it moved up by 7%. Well, I didn't tell, I didn't say well, but of course you can obviously see some nice uh, technical formations there. Question is whether you would or you wouldn't consider trading it. Okay, so looks like we have... Hold on a second. I'm told my microphone may be a little bit low. I'll put it up a little bit. Okay. Hope it's better. So it looks like uh, we have 45% saying yes, 54% saying no. Um, <laughs> I have to say I'm surprised. <laughs> Why would you say, okay, so technical formation looks uh, kind of nice. Um, why would you say no? Those of you who said no, I really like to know why. I'm, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. Volume, you can see the volume here. Volume? This stock has uh, 1,300,000 shares. Not a volume problem, absolutely not. The fact that you see the, um, the volume relatively low is because you see that spike over here? That just changes the way you see the volume. That's it. If you didn't have that spike, then you would have seen higher bars here. So nothing to do about uh, the volume. You want to see the daily first. Okay can see the price range. Good point. It's uptrending. Yes. That's one minute. Yes. I should have said that. Okay. Okay. I Well, if I look at the chart, let me tell you this. If I look at the chart, there's absolutely nothing wrong I can find here. Nothing about the volume. I don't know what the volume from looking at here. I can tell you it's 1.3 million shares. Uh, the chart uh, looks like a stock that is uptrending very nicely. It's one minute candles, yes. And it, it really looks fine. I don't see any, any problem with that. I would definitely like to trade it unless I would look at something that Cesario uh, uh, <laughs> mentioned, which is the price range. Thank you for that. So here's the price range. I just clicked uh, <laughs> the chart so you can see the price range. So take a good look. And the topic of our lesson today is, what we're going to talk about today, is the personality. Personality of stock. Yeah, that's a big ouch. So, we're going to talk about personality and the way to trade stocks with different personality by using different type of orders. Should you use a limit order? What kind of limit order? Should you use a market order? We're going to talk about that because I have the feeling that uh, with... Uh, plenty of you guys, it's not absolutely clear. So, I'm watching the chart now. It looks perfectly good. And again, there's no volume issue. Uh, here's the volume, see? 1.3 million shares. Nothing wrong about that. Stock's up more than 8%. So, it looks quite okay. But then, I need to take a look at the numbers here. So, you see, although it looks like a great-looking chart... If you take a look at the numbers, these are 20 cents increments. So immediately I see I have a problem here. Immediately. Now I go back and I start looking. I mean, first look, I would, for example, it happens to me a lot of times. Uh, I'm, I'm, somebody's posting um, 
a trade in the trading room and he says okay look at uh, Senex and Senex has a nice technical formation and then I'm opening up my chart and the first thing I'm taking a look at the chart and say wow that looks really interesting there's several opportunities now of course I don't uh, let's assume I was looking at it at it here okay if I was looking here, I would see a very nice gap up. I would see nice consolidation. And immediately I would think, well, maybe we have a nice opportunity to take it over these highs over here. So that could look like a nice technical formation, see, right over here. And it did move nicely. And then, uh, depending on where it would be posted, I would, I may be asked, what should we do if it moves over this level over here, which really looks very nice too. So that looks like a very nice technical formation, and I may consider taking it uh, long over here. But now, just by just looking at the chart, first thing that comes into my mind, fine, I'm going long, absolutely, it looks great. Let's post it in the room. Second, I, I, I. I do that really uh, in this, um, uh, I, I first look at the chart and then I look at the numbers really. That's, that's, that's the way I do it. Then the first uh, look would be the chart and it would look great because usually you don't have a problem with the numbers, but again, you need to take a look at the personality. And then you see the numbers here and you say, well, we have a problem. Now you go back and you see how far can it really move? For example, look from the bottom here, which is approximately 11.36, to the top, 11.52, that's 18 cents, okay? Now take a look at this breakout over here, came over this level which looks quite a nice technical formation and that's approximately 11.52, it came all the way up to 11.61, that's 9 cents, maybe even less. Take a look at this breakout over here, it looks great, technically speaking, it looks great, 11.61 to 11.71, these are 10 cents, and it will continue this way. So although the technical formation looks great, in order to go long, you, if you're lucky, you'll get it at 11.62. It moved all the way up to 11.71. If you're lucky, you'll send, you will sell one cent lower, which is 11.70, I guess. Moving at 62, sell at 70, 8 cents, doesn't worth your time doesn't worth the risk, doesn't worth your time, and certainly doesn't worth the commission you're paying. So if you have a trade that its potential is 10, 12 cents, it, it doesn't help you to double your size or anything like that. Just ignore it. The personality of this stock is not something that you would like to trade. The personality of this, of this stock is just a very small mover. 10 cents, 15 cents, and you'll be lucky to get the whole 15. Of course, you will never be able to get the whole 15. So if you look at the way it behaves, that's the way it, it trades. Now, what kind of an order, assuming you would like to go long, and I wouldn't, what kind of an order you would use in order to buy over this breakout point? Now, I would... I would personally, I, I personally use a CFD platform, which means I have unlimited liquidity, uh, and I would gladly use a market order whenever I can, because I don't have any issue with liquidity. But in this case, I may consider using a limit order. And if you have a stock platform, you should probably always use a limit order. What kind of an order do you think you would use? I mean, well, I just gave you the answer, actually. So I would use a limit order, and the reason I would use a limit order is because let's assume I expect to get stop limit order. Well, that's fine. It's, just, it's, 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 it's the same as using a limit order, just it, it, it triggers automatically. So I would use a limit order. The reason I would use a limit order is because if that's the trigger here, 11.61, and I want to buy it over... 1161 I will need to make sure that if I'm trading a 10 cent target let's assume I had 15 cents here okay let's assume I was looking back or I was believing that such a great technical formation would take me more than 10 cents okay 
probably won't because you look at the at, you, you look at at its personality and again topic of our lessons today is personality so it probably won't move more but let's just assume you think it could move 15 cents now if you're thinking it could move up to 15 cents and your target should be 12 13 14 50 cents you can't buy it more than one cent over the price so you have to use you just have to use an 1162 limit order so i would use a limit order with sorry 1162 and i would wait just like that and hope it's going to move over 1161 and when i'm going to see in the level 2 1162 i'm going to click that button with a limit of 1162 I won't buy it a cent over 1162 because the personality of this stock. So I'm not only talking to you today about the personality of a stock, I'm also talking to you today about what kind of an order you should use. And if you use a limit order, what should be your limit? If your target is 12 cents, 13 cents, you obviously cannot use a limit order of more than just one cent over the trigger point. So that's a very important thing to do when you're trading a stock uh, that has a relatively low target. If you have any questions, you are welcome to ask. Uh, please use the Q mark so I can know that it's not just a chat and it's a question. Then I'll be very, very happy to go back and uh, answer. Okay. When do you exactly trigger the limit order? Uh, maybe that's a good point. I would, uh, I would, in this case, I would definitely wait until I see, until I see 11.62 in, in the bid and ask, in this case in the ask. So in the ask side, when I'm going to see 11.62, then I'm going to click. Now it's not such a big mover, so it's very, very likely to hold at 11.62. There's a good chance it's going to hold at 11.62. Yes, I should, Patty, I should definitely see the 11.62 and click the button. But there's no harm done. If I'm not going to see the 11, if, if it's going to move over, and that's just another thing I wanted to talk to you about. If, if, if the stock is going to move over 11.62, I just clicked an order to buy at 11.62, okay? Well, I could I could click the order right now because you see the price is higher. So let's just put a hundred shares here in case I'm wrong in something. And I'm going to click the order right now to buy at 11.62. Of course, it's going to be an open order. Um, it's going to be an open order. Hold on a second. Let's see it over here. So I'm going to click an order to buy it at 11.62. There's the order. I have an open order to buy it at 11.62. That's my limit order now. Now, let's assume I saw it moving over 11.61. I click the order to buy it at 11.62. And all of a sudden, I mean, I was a little bit too slow. Or it moved up quicker than I anticipated. Now I have an open order. What do you think I should do with that? What do you think I should do with the open order right now? I mean, it just moved, let's say, to 11.64, 65. What should I do with that? Cancel the order, Danny says. Wait a few seconds. Wait five seconds. Cancel. Leave it. Close it. Cancel. Cancel. Wait 10 seconds. Leave it open. Wait. Cancel. Okay. Different opinions. Well, again. If it would move as slow as I anticipate, I should probably get the 11.62 once I clicked it, okay? But if I missed it and it moved over 11.62, the next question I should ask myself is, how far did it go? Now, if the target was, let, let's go all the way. If the target was 12 cents, if the target was 12 cents, and the stock went all the way to 12 cents very quickly. This could happen, of course. 
happens to us a lot of times. If it, ha if it happened to move very quickly to 11 six from 11.62 to, let's say, 11.75, and I have an open order, I should definitely cancel the open order. I should definitely cancel the open order. Because it moved up all the way to my target. And now, once it moved all the way to my target, you don't want to get it at the pullback. You see, here, it pulled back. And if you would have waited several minutes here, you would get filled, which is probably not bad in this case because it continued to move higher, and that's fine. But usually, it, o it also depends on how far did it go. For example, if it would have moved up 2 or 3 cents above my, above my limit order, and I would have an open limit order, I would probably wait. Because a lot of time, when stock is moving over your limit order and you wait, so a spike up that you missed, usually you will see, after a spike up that you missed, usually you will see a small pullback. Now, if this pullback is going to be just one or two cents, you can probably get in with your limit order. So usually, right after it triggers, you would usually see some small spikes you will see it moving a little bit higher, a little bit lower. For example, I think there's something like that here. Watch this high, the high of this candle. So initial move in this case was, well, actually, let's put it this way so we can see. So the initial move in this case was 11.62. And then it came down to... 11.61 again. So you see, it moved up by one cent, came down, see this candle here, one cent, and then continued. So usually you will see these small ripples right after it moves in. So if you'll keep your order open, if you'll keep your order open, you are, there's a good chance you're going to get filled once it comes down a little bit. But the question, the, the question is, the most important question is, is not only how long did you wait, which I'm going to discuss soon, but also how far did it go. If it went too far, for example, I would say for 12 cents, if it would have moved like 6 or 7 cents, I wouldn't, I would immediately cancel the open order. Immediately cancel the order, order, open order. If it would have moved up 2 or 3 cents out of 12, I would probably leave it for a few more seconds, hoping for a spike down that would uh, get me filled. So, I would wait a little bit. I definitely wouldn't cancel it. And that's true to most of the trades that you will take. Usually they will not move as far enough for you to cancel the order. You should wait a little bit more. Don't cancel the order. It's okay to get filled once, uh, once the stock is coming uh, even slightly back. Okay? So, that would be the personality of this stock. Any questions about that? I don't see any Q marks. Okay, so I'll continue. Now, I want to show you some more... I was watching Tiva today. Okay, look at Tiva. Now, what would you say about the personality of this stock? Let's, let's try and examine it, okay? This move over here was from 22.72 down to 22.42. So that's quite a decent move, to move down by 25 cents. Then from the low here, it moved up here. It was uh, 47, 69, 22 cents. Once it broke over this nice consolidation here, it moved from 68 to 85, 86. That's almost 26, 18 cents. Look at this breakout over here. It was a very nice one. Uh, 22, 86 to 23, 19 which is uh, 33 cents, if I'm not mistaken. So, 35 cents, 35 cents. So, that, that, so the personality, I would say the personality of Tiva is anywhere between 20 to 35 cents, something like that. So, watching the way it behaves, 
Definitely a candidate for trading. Definitely something I would like to trade. And that's the personality of Tiva. I'm watching the way it behaved. Let's assume I was looking at it somewhere over here, anticipating that once it moves over to a new high, it will continue. It has a very nice technical formation, a nice kind of cup and handle. Not exactly, but it looks really nice. That is a nice cup here. And I was, I could seriously consider going long here at 22.86 or a cent above. So that looks like a very nice technical formation. And if I look at the previous behavior of Tiva, I really like it. That looks like I would probably have anywhere between 20 to 30 cent target. It did more than that. It did 35 cents or so. So if I would consider going long Tiva because I like the personality, and again, uh, the personality is a very important part in your decision making and it's also a very important part in thinking about where is your stop just like Mehmet Mem Mem asked right now so Mehmet the, the, I, would, I would look back and I would say if the personality of Tiva is for example when it came to 86 here it came down all the way to 68 so that was like um, less than 20 cents. So I would say personality could be a stop best case scenario of 15 cents, probably something like here, or maybe 20 cents, maybe 22 cents, something like that. I would probably consider a stop somewhere around here. I think that once it moves over that level, it would probably not move lower than that and still continue uptrending. So that would probably be my stop. So the personality of Tiva looks great. I would love to take that trade, I would consider anywhere between 20 to 30 cent target and maybe around 20 cent uh, stop loss. So that looks like a decent risk reward, looks like a very nice technical formation. Uh, now, of course, the stock is up right now of 7%. It wasn't that much uh, over here, but it does look very nice. So the next question would be, where would I, what kind of an order I would use? Would I use a limit order? and how many cents would be would I use in this limit order. So again, I'm trying to take a 20 cent partial because I don't, I don't know how far it would go. Um, I'm, I could definitely consider a market order. Yes, yes, I would definitely consider a market order, but that is because I'm trading CFDs. Because when I trade CFDs, I have unlimited liquidity and there's no problem with volume in Tiva today, you see 23 million shares. So I would definitely consider using a market order in this case because I use CFDs. But if I have a 20 cent target, I should also consider using a limit order. And let's just assume that the volume of Tiva wasn't as high as it is today. It's a special day, it's a special high volume day today. So usually it's less. Let's just consider it could run a little bit. And let's consider another thing. Let's just, you know, that, that, that is not a whole number or anything breakout that looks like a very normal breakout formation. But if that was, for example, a, a whole number here, I would definitely think it could run. So let's just look at Tiva and try and figure out what kind of limit order do we need to use. So if my target is 20 cents or 30 cents, to anywhere between 20 to, 20 to 30 cents, I should probably consider a limit order. Well, you know what? I'll ask you, what limit order would you use? Again, assuming the volume was not that much and then you're not trading CFDs. If you're trading CFDs, you could definitely trade market orders. Five cents, Andrew. Two cents, Denny. CISO says three to five cents, four, three. Four to five, five, three cents. Well, I think you're all in the range. I think two cents is a little bit, uh, um, it's a little too low, Stephen. I would I would probably use anywhere between th 3 to 5, yeah. Anywhere between 3 to 5, I'm not sure. 
not more than that because if my target is worst case scenario 20 cents then I would I wouldn't like to get less than 15 and stop loss could be 15 so that makes it reasonable so if my stop loss is around 15 cents and I would buy it 5 cents over the limit over the over the breakout point I could I could definitely use up to 5 cents um, limit order I I would probably use three. I would probably use three. Three or four. I'm not sure I would use five, but um, five could be um, could be a good uh, an, an okay decision. So again, that's based on the personality of the stock that I'm trading. I'm looking at the stock. I'm looking at the stop loss. I'm looking at previous behavior. I'm determining whether I'll move in or not to this trade and then I will determine what kind of limit order I will use because again that has to do with my target it has to do with the volume it has to do with the fact whether we have a whole number here or not uh, one last uh, example for today is uh, pet Q so I was watching pet Q earlier stock is up 10% so it made a very big move today and certainly is uptrending very very nicely and again we're watching one minute candles here I just watch it in order to make sure that you know I see every small nuance here so look at the behavior of pet Q and let's again talk about the personality of the stock because this stock has a different personality I'll answer this uh, question soon, Petty. So this stock has a different personality. So let's say I'm looking to go long over this very nice technical formation here. Stock gapped up, came up, down, moved to the highs. That is certainly something I would consider going long. So that's around 20, 30, 30 to 20. So 30 to 20 here, that could be a nice entry point. So I'm looking back. And recently I can see that it came up from 32.20 to uh, 31.40. So that's an 80 cent move. Now that when you look at the chart, we started by looking at Cenex. It looks the same, but it, in Cenex that was 10 cents. In, in PetQ that's 80 cents. So the personality of this stock is absolutely different. Now, one thing you should know, many times, it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with how much uh, the cost uh, of uh, per share. For example, you see this stock is at, is priced at the 30s. If I'll go back to Tiva, which uh, personality is more like 20 cents, not 80 cents. It's priced at 23. So yes, Cenex is more expensive, but kind of 50 percent more expensive. Okay. So if that person, if that stock personality is 20 to 30 cents, Cenex should have been 30 to 40 cents or so, but it's not, it has 80 cents. So as you can see, uh, sorry, the personality of PetQ is absolutely different. It has an 80 cent personality. It's different and the personality of stocks has nothing to do has nothing to do with how much it costs. Well, of course, if you go to stocks that are over 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars, you would usually find a personality of uh, 80 cents, 1 dollar, 2 dollars or more. You would certainly do. But most of the stocks that we'll be trading will be stocks that are priced anywhere between 20 to 50 dollars. And it has nothing to do with their price because stocks move moves in points they don't move in percents it has nothing to do with percents so talking about percent wise this personality of uh, pet Q is much bigger than personality of of uh, tiva or senex or anything else so you watch uh, senex and you look for an 80 cent move and you got it 30 to 40 and it moved all the way up to 33.04, uh, close to. 
uh, 65 cents approximately, 64 cents, something like that. But quite a big mover. Now look at look again here. Around 33 dollars, actually 33 whole number, and then it moved all the way to 34. So that's another one point move. So anywhere between 65 to one point, average 80 cents. That's the personality. And you look for the next breakout. That's a 34 whole number. Nice with the, it works nice with the whole numbers. And it moved all the way here, which is almost 60 cents. So that has a personality of anywhere between 60 cents to one dollar. When you trade a stock like that, again, I go back to the limit order. What kind of a limit order would you use? Now, the volume is lower than Tiva. It has 3.4 million shares. So since the volume is lower, and of course it's going to be a little bit more spready because of that, you see that four cents spread now. Once it goes through, it would probably not be as slow as Tiva moving up of the breakout point, plus it's moving over a whole number. So that's a different scenario. And I would ask you the same question. What kind of a limit order would you use? Now, First, let me just say, although I trade CFDs and I have unlimited liquidity and I could easily trade market orders, in this kind of a trade, I would definitely use a limit order. That would be like a no-brainer for me. Absolutely no other, chase, no other choice. It moved up over a whole number here, I would use a limit order. It moved up over a whole number here, I would definitely use a limit order. I wouldn't use a market order because when a stock is moving over a whole number, it usually flies up. We know that. That is because uh, there's a lot of sellers at all numbers and once they go through, they usually move up very strong. So that's a very good example. And my question is, if you're expecting anywhere between 60 cents to $1 target, what would be your limit order? Definitely you can't use a 33.01 when you're trading a stock like that. It has a spread of four cents, sometimes more. So, yes, you can use a stop limit order, absolutely. Eight cents, Vitaly, and 10 cents, 12 cents, says Danny, five cents, Amir, Sharif says 10 to 15 cents, 33, 10, 10 cents, up to seven cents, zero five, eight to 10 cents, eight cents, Okay. Okay. I would expecting 60 cents. I would probably use 8 to 10, which is like most of you just mentioned. Possibly 7, possibly 10. I don't think I would go more than 10 and not likely. Probably anywhere between 7 to 9 cents, something like that. And again, that's because I'm also anticipating a 60 cent move or maybe 80, but I would be looking for quite a big mover. So I could kind of sacrifice seven, eight cents, maybe nine. What you need to do is to ask yourself after a breakout, what would you give? You know, it happens to me sometimes when I'm using a limit order which is too close. Let's say I use the limit order of 3302. You could get filled. I don't know how fast it moved really, but you could get filled. But what happens if you use a 3302 limit order and it just passed over you and now it's a 3309 or 07. Well, I, 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 Many, many people I know would look back and say, wow, I wish I had a limit order of 0, 0306. Then I, would get, I could get filled. It looks great. It looks like it's going to continue higher. Well, you don't know that for a fact. Just moved up 7, 8 cents. But you just use a limit order of, zero th of 3305 and you missed it. You always need to think about what would be if you were in, what would be an acceptable price if you missed the, the breakout. So if I miss the breakout, would I accept 33789? Probably yes. Somewhere in that range. Probably yes. Somewhere in that range.
Okay. Um, so then I could go back, go forward to um, thirty-four dollars here, and thirty-four dollars breakout formation here also looks very nice. Very nice consolidation here, and it did go through. And in this case, you could have missed the breakout, but you should have left an open order. So if you use the limit order of let's say seven cents higher. Uh, if you watch how far it went over 34, I'm going to click that candle, it's 34.22. You see, so it was easy to miss it, 34.22. So if I would have used an 8 cent or so limit order, I would usually keep it open for another, sometimes even, even one or two minutes, sometimes one or two minutes, just to get a chance to move in. And let's say I missed the limit, the, the, I missed the entry here. Maybe I was slow. Maybe it didn't have it didn't have the it didn't have the liquidity, and it went through the price very quick. I don't know, of course, right now by watching the candles. But then you see this small red candle here, and it went down all the way to 34.12, which would probably would probably not I, I wouldn't get filled. But you see this red candle could have came down to 34.08, which it didn't. It moved all the way down to 34.12, so 10 cents from the top of this candle. But I would wait. And if I miss this trade because it didn't come down another 4 cents, fine. I wouldn't chase it up. And then it continued moving higher. And then once you see it starts moving higher, that's the point where you should cancel your order. So I would keep the order open for this candle and just hope it's going to get me filled second minute candle and then when I see the third minute candle moving up over the top I would definitely uh, I would definitely uh, cancel the order so I would probably keep the order open for approximately two minutes and then I would see that the price is moving higher I would definitely not like to get filled once it comes down to that point now although it continued higher but I would I would never know so if it moves all the way to the point where I should have had my partial and then comes down, I wouldn't like to get filled. Well, that's a different type of trade. That is a trade where you buy the what we call the retest. It moves up, it retests what was resistance, which is now support, and continued higher. But I would rather buy the breakouts. Your chance to succeed in buying the breakouts is much greater than your chance to succeed when you buy a retest. Sometimes I would buy a retest, but if the retest is very quickly done. But not uh, in this case, like uh, six minutes later or so. So I would use a limit order, but the limit would be probably eight cents. And again, based on the personality of the stock that I am trading. So again, the whole idea of this lesson was going back, looking at the personality of the stock, trying to understand where's my stop loss, what should be my target, what kind of limit order I should use, whether you should use a market order or a limit order, in the case of whole numbers, definitely limit orders, and how long should I wait after I click the button and possibly missed the trade. Now let's see what are your questions. I'll go back, I think the last one. Petty asked there earlier if I take into account the spread for the limit uh, for the limit amount. Yeah, spread is very important. I think I, j I mentioned I mentioned that Petty. Um, if if you have uh, like in this case right now uh, an eight cent spread, well or seven cent or something like that, definitely you need to take into consideration what kind of limit order you're using. And sometimes you just watch the spread and you say, well, if I have a twelve cent spread and uh, a 60 cent target, I just, I'm just not going to trade it. Or I'm going to use a limit order, which is eight cents. I won't give more. I won't use a bigger um, uh, limit order, but then you just hope you're going to get filled.
why don't you use a stop limit order? Stop limit order would uh, probably trigger faster than I would. M many times we are, there's no time to use a stop limit orders, but in the case of in the case of a whole number like here, I think you should definitely consider using a stop limit order. The problem I have with stop limit orders is that I tend to keep them, I tend to forget them. So sometime a stock like that would come down too much in my opinion, then move up. So I would use a stop limit order, but I would forget about it. And then an hour later, I would say I got filled at a technical formation that I didn't like. That does happen to me quite a lot. Um, not a lot, but it did happen to me in the past. So that would be a little bit more tricky to use a stop limit order. You can, if, you, if that's the only stock you're watching and you, you can definitely use a stop limit order. No reason not to use it. But it takes time to put it in I, and I'm, I'm moving in between so many stocks all the time, so. Uh, can you use a market order and anticipate the breakout? Well, Salam, I definitely can use that, but not in whole numbers. In, in whole numbers, you should probably wait until it touches the whole number. So you can only anticipate it at the whole number. So it, when it comes close to whole number, don't anticipate anything because it may have a problem with the whole number. So just wait for the whole number. Sometimes I would buy at the whole number because uh, because uh, I, I see that the number of sellers is reduced or something like that. Doesn't stop limit order give you a range as opposed to trigger price and wouldn't that be beneficial? Yeah, stop. And again, I just, I think I just mentioned that stop order has advantages. I'm not saying it doesn't have advantages. Advantages. Disadvantages, I tend to forget them sometimes. Why do I expect a big mover at 33? Because uh, it's still early in the day. There's a lot of volume and the stock is uh, hitting a whole number. Once the stock hits a whole number, it would usually move up very quickly. That's it. It's a whole number. Uh, no, Ivan, I did not uh, talk about um, the quantity you should buy. I mean, the quantity is a different story. We should discuss this in a different lesson. It's all about uh, personality of stocks and limit orders. When the stock is spread, do you buy at the ask even with the spreads? Sometimes I do. But that is if I believe that uh, that if I believe that you know if for example here, let's say I want to buy it uh, now. So you see, right now it has a twelve cent spread. <laughs> That's because market is closed. <laughs> just market just closed a few seconds ago. <laughs> okay, so let's say let's say it has a twelve cent spread. I wouldn't buy it up twelve cents. But if it had a smaller spread, let's say, again, I, I mentioned earlier, seven, eight, nine cents, I would definitely buy it at, at the ask. Yes, I would. If I expect it to move up 60 cents, I would definitely think about that. Any more questions or... Well, I hope it was... Uh, something that uh, helped you somehow. Again, a very important thing is to notice the personality of the stock. And then once you decide what is the personality, you understand the personality of the stock, then you just know what kind of an order you should be using. Just one notorious low volatility personality is of CMCSA. 
you see that's another example of stock that is a very small mover although it makes a very nice move today but for example that's another example you see CMCSA moved here over 3520 to 3534 you see that's a 14 cent move so you have nothing to expect when you see a nice breakout like here 35.40 it moved up to 50 that's a 10 cent move again if you're lucky to buy one cent over the high and take it at the high you would probably get an eight cent target so again it's all about the personality if somebody's going to point out cmcsa in the trading room i would uh, before looking at the stock i would just remember the personality is terrible i'm, I'm not going to trade it When you reduce your size after the third trade, or when you really green, uh, several reasons to reduce size, Armor. Uh, several reasons. Uh, if I'm losing, I'm reducing size. If I'm winning, I'm reducing size. In both cases, when you lose or when you win, you're not mentally capable of continuing. If you're losing, you have problems, of course, obviously. If you're winning, you also feel kind of invincible, and then instead of adding which you shouldn't you should be reducing size but that's another topic okay guys we're done with our mentoring session today thank you very much for being here with me today and i'll see you all tomorrow in the training room i hope each and every one of you thank you thank you very much See you tomorrow.